Mina san konnichiwa. Hello friends, how are you? Welcome to the YouTube channel Saral Japani and I am your friend Sujay. Today is lesson 43 of this series of Japanese learning for beginners and today we are going to learn a very important concept which is devoicing of vowels. Friends, let us take the case of this simple sentence. Watashi wa Sujay desu. Let's take one more. Domo arigato gozaimasu. And one more. Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. In all of this, have you noticed my pronunciation of the red marked sounds? Watashi wa sujoi desu. Domo arigato gozaimasu. Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. So, you might have noticed that the vowels have been devoiced in each of these. Su, masu. This is desu, becomes des, masu becomes mas, gozaimasu, yoroshiku becomes yoroshiku, onegaishimasu becomes onegaishimasu. So, what's devoicing then? Some vowel sounds in certain words are not pronounced in the way they are written. That is, the vowel effect is negligible or near silent. So, this is devoicing. That means only the consonant sound is uttered without followed by a definitive vowel sound. For example, sh in place of shi, s in place of su, k in place of ku, ts in place of tsu, and so on. Now we have two kinds of sounds, voiced sounds and unvoiced sounds. So let's see what are voiced sounds and what are unvoiced sounds. Voice sounds are those that produce vibrations in the vocal cord, that is in our throat. So when we say these or when we speak out these sounds, we will feel the vibration in our throat. A, E, U, A, O, M, N, R, and so on. There are many other sounds which are voice. So for each of these, if you try with me, A, so you can feel the vibration happening in your throat. Similarly, U, A, O. So when you utter these sounds, you will feel the vibration going on in the throat. So that's why these are called voiced sounds. Now, unvoiced sounds do not produce vibrations in the vocal cord. So these are the unvoiced sounds. So you can utter these and you will see that nothing happens in the throat. There is no vibration that could be felt k, s, sh, t, ch, t, h. one more time k, s, sh, t, ch, t, h. so for each of these sounds we do not feel the vibration in our throat So this is the Japanese sound system. In the Japanese sound system, there are voiced and unvoiced sounds. The ones that are highlighted in these three boxes, these are basically the unvoiced sounds and rest all are voiced sounds, including these five vowel sounds. So these highlighted ones, these correspond to the sounds that we just uttered in the last slide, which is So these are the unvoiced sounds. So we gave this background of voiced and unvoiced sounds because this will be applicable when we start discussing about the devoicing of vowels from the next slide onwards. So with this much background, let's come to today's topic, which is devoicing of vowels. So practically all vowels are voiced vowels. However, in certain cases, vowels may be devoiced when we speak fluently, that is at a natural speed, just like a native speaker of that language. If we speak at slower rate than natural, devoicing won't be applicable or devoicing won't be noticeable. In other words, a native Japanese speaker will speak at a natural speed, so he will naturally be devoicing the vowels wherever required, even without noticing it. So it is said that many Japanese people, they don't know what is 
the theory of devoicing of vowels, but they speak it very correctly. They pronounce the words very correctly. They perform devoicing of vowels even without knowing that they are doing it. So one may ask then, what is the reason for devoicing or what's the use of devoicing? The answer could be to make the spoken language more fluent, look more natural uh, at a faster pace, and it sound like it sound more practical. So there are several rules of devoicing and there are several exceptions about it as well. However, as a beginner of Japanese learning, we should focus on two very basic rules without going into much exceptions and complicated ones because that will only confuse the beginners. So we will focus in this lesson the two very, very fundamental rules that needs to be followed while devoicing the vowels. In Japanese language, vowels are devoiced in between or after unvoiced consonants. When I repeat one more time. These unvoiced consonants are k, s, sh, t, ch, t. So what are the governing rules for devoicing and are there any exceptions? So as we just mentioned that there are rules, there are exceptions. So we begin with the two basic rules of devoicing. The first rule is e or u in between two unvoiced consonants. The second rule is sometimes e or u after an unvoiced consonant at the end of a sentence. So this means that if the vowel sounds e or u in it appears in between two unvoiced consonants, then that vowel sound e or u will get devoiced. That is, those will not be uttered. And rule two is sometimes, not always, sometimes e and u sounds after an unvoiced consonant at the end of a sentence will get devoiced. So now we will look at several examples of these two rules to have a clear understanding of how it is done. That is how devising is done. So before that, there are other rules and many exceptions and deviations, as I just mentioned in one of the previous slides. As a beginner to Japanese learning, do not bother about them. Just focus on the above two rules for now and you should be good. So let's start with rule one, E or U in between two unvoiced consonants. The first example is ski. Ski. So you can see here it's written as suki. It is written as suki, which means like. But since s and k both are unvoiced consonants and u is appearing in between them. So what does the rule say? E or u in between two unvoiced consonants. So since u is a is it since u is appearing between two unvoiced consonants s and k, so it will get devoiced. So suki becomes ski. Next is this is tsuki. If you go with the spelling, it is tsuki, meaning moon. But again, ts and k, these are the two unvoiced consonants, and u is appearing in between them. So u will get silenced or u will get devoiced. So tsuki becomes tsuki. tsuki. So don't get confused with the previous one. It was ski, 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 and this is tski, 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 ski. This is tski. I hope the difference is clear and I would request you and I would advise you to please pronounce along with me so that you get the difference and you get the pronunciation. Just by watching the video will not help. You have to keep speaking, keep uttering these sounds and words. So let's move on to the next example. Ashta. Ashta. This is written as Ashita. The spelling is Ashita, meaning tomorrow, but sh and th, sh and th. So these are the two unvoiced consonants and E is appearing in between them. That's why this E will get devoiced. E will get devoiced and so we have these it's sounding as ashta, ashta. 
not Ashita, it's Ashita. Watakshi. Watakshi, we all know Watashi, which means I. And if we want to say I in a polite way, then it is Watakshi. So the spelling is Watakushi. Watakushi. So now U appears in between K and Sh. So that's why since k and sh are unvoiced consonants and u is appearing in between them. So this rule one states that this u will get, get devoiced. So watakushi becomes watakshi. Watakshi. Next example is of chikara. Chikara. It is chikara meaning power. Again, ch and k. These two unvoiced consonants. These two are sandwiching this E vowel, so E vowel will get devoiced and it becomes chikara, chikara. The next example is a very common one, gakusei. Gakusei. This is gakusei. Gakusei becomes gakusei because k and s. These two are unvoiced consonants and u is appearing in between them. So remember that only E and u should be present, no, not anything else. A or A or O will not be devoiced. The devoicing will happen only for E and U if it if they are sandwiched between two unvoiced consonants. So here the two unvoiced consonants are K and S. That's why this U is getting devoiced. So Gakusei is becoming Gakusei. Gakusei becomes Gakusei. Next example is taksan. Taksan. It is takusan and it becomes taksan because again k and s. These two are unvoiced consonants and u appears in between them. Taksan meaning a lot. Next is yaksoku. Yaksoku means promise and here again k and s appears and a U appears in between them. So U gets devoiced. Yaksoku. Yaksoku. Yoroshiku. Very, very common one, and especially for a new learner or a new person in Japan. This Yoroshiku Onegaishimasu, we all know. Nice to meet you. Uh, it's It loosely translates to nice to meet you, although in Japanese it has some other meaning, but since that meaning is not applicable in English or any other foreign language, so the near uh, meaning is nice to meet you, glad to meet you, and uh, this is Yoroshiku Negaishima. So Yoroshiku becomes Yoroshiku. Yoroshiku here sh and k. These are the two unvoiced consonants, and e sound appears in between them as per rule one. E sound will get devoiced, and we have. Yoroshku. Yoroshku. Next is skoshi. Skoshi. Skoshi, which means a little. So the word is sukoshi. Sukoshi. So here s and k are two unvoiced consonants, u appearing in between them. It gets devoiced, and we have skoshi. 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 This is a very important one. Important in this sense, it is kind of exception or deviation from this rule one. So, although we said that we won't look into the deviations as a beginner, that may confuse us, but still, I have brought two examples of exceptions so that you get a slight flavor of what kind of deviations or what kind of deviations from this rule may happen. So if we look at this word, it appears to be Fukushima, which is Fukushima. Fukushima is a place in Japan. We all know a nuclear disaster had happened. A big disaster had happened. Uh, so Fukushima is that place. So how it will be pronounced? It is Fukushima. It is Fukushima. Fukushima. So here the devising is taking place only for this U between F and F, F and K. But this U is equally qualified to be devised because we have K and Sh. K and Sh. So this should have been 
also devised, but actually it is not happening. The reason being, if the pitch accent, if the syllable is at a higher pitch accent than the following syllable, then the vowel of that high accent or high pitch syllable will not get devoiced. That means in Fukushima, ku is it at is at higher accent. That is Fukushima. 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 So Fukushima here ku is at a higher accent than she. Ku is at a higher pitch accent than she. That's why this ku will not get devoiced. So it is Fukushima. 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 So it is not Fukushima, it is Fukushima. So we have to devise this U and just say Fukushima, 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 Fukushima. So it is Fukushima. Similarly, one more example. So it is Kutsushita, Kutsushita, which is which means socks. So we will pronounce it as Kutsushita. So here you can see U between K and T is getting devoiced and E between SH and T is getting devoiced as per rule one. But as per rule one, this U between T and SH should also have got devoiced, but that is not happening because TSU is at a higher pitch accent than SHE, so it will remain. So it will be KTSUSHTA. So I, I, I am uh, I am telling this one uh, slowly so that you can understand the pronunciation of each syllable. Ku becomes k. Tsu remains as tsu. She becomes sh and ta remains as ta. So it is k tsu sh ta. K tsu. So it is kutsushita, kutsushita, meaning socks. OK, so now we will see some words which do not follow this rule one, which which are not applicable for devising based on this rule. So this word is sakura, sakura. So here we have u sound after this unvoiced consonant k. But the following consonant R is not an unvoiced one. It is a voiced consonant. So that means U is not between an unvoiced consonant, is not between two unvoiced consonants, but between one unvoiced and one voiced consonant. That's why this rule will not be applicable and U will not be devoiced. So Sakura will not become Sakra. Sakura will not become Sakura, it will remain Sakura. So devoicing is not applicable here. Similarly, Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi will remain Mitsubishi, it will not become Mitsubishi. It will not become Mitsubishi because B is a voiced consonant, B is a voiced consonant, and T is an unvoiced consonant. So U in between will not get devoiced, it will be Mitsubishi. So, friends, now we will move to rule number two. Rule number two is sometimes E and U after an unvoiced consonant at the end of a sentence gets devoiced. So the most common example of this is this. We know that the sentences end with this, which means this is nothing but the verb for am, is, are, and sentences end with this. So desu will become des. The spelling is desu, but it, when we speak, we call it des. This is the most common example of rule two. So here you can see there is no sandwiching of u or i between two unvoiced consonants. It's just the end of the sentence. And hence it gets devised according to this rule too. Similarly, mas, mas, arigato gozaimasu, onegai shimasu. So these are all examples of mas and 
the sentences end with mas as well so masu becomes mas due to devising and this is again another good example of rule 2 arigato gozaimasu onegai shimasu and so on another example is chikatets 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 you know chikatets means metro or subway so it's written as chikatetsu chikatetsu so now we can see according to rule 1 this e sound between ch and k gets devised so it becomes chikatets and here chikatetsu it will not be tetsu because this is according to rule 2 if it is the end of the sentence then the u sound followed by an unvoiced consonant also gets devoiced so it will becomes chikatets 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 not chikatetsu it's chikatets now another important aspect here is that suppose we write chikatetsu des that means it's subway so only chikatets means subway chikatetsu des means it's subway it is subway so here in chikatetsu des this tsu is not the end of the sentence and also it is followed by des so this the sound is not an unvoiced consonant it is a voiced consonant that means the u sound after ts that is u sound between ts and the is not something between two unvoiced consonants but between one unvoiced and one voiced consonants so that's why u will not get devoiced in this case although chikatets it's chikatets but here it will be chikatetsu des chikatetsu des chikatetsu des not chikatets des similarly empitsu 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 here empitsu means pencil so here again you can see the same exception because p sound is at a higher pitch accent so it will not get devoiced even though e appears between two unvoiced consonants which are and ts but it will not get devoiced because of p having a higher pitch accent than tsu so that's why it is empits empits and if we say empitsu des that is its pencil then it becomes empitsu des and here this u will also not get devised so it remains as empitsu empitsu in its full pronunciation empitsu des here the devising will happen and not at empits so empits becomes empitsu des so friends next one and the final one is a foreign word in fact it is the name of a person the name is doris doris and in katakana we and in japanese pronunciation we we write in katakana and in pronunciation we call it doris doris we read we write it as dorisu dorisu but pronounce it as doris that means here also there is a devising of this last sound and if we say doris des that means i am doris i am doris doris su des so here u is not sandwiched between two unvoiced consonants here s is a unvoiced consonant but the is a voiced consonant but even then this u is getting devoiced so it remains as doris des it's not dorisu des it's doris des and the reason is that this is a proper noun this is a proper noun it's not a common noun and it's the name of a person so it cannot be changed so doris remains as doris it remains doris des so even whether it is doris or doris des devoicing will still be applicable so friends that's all about devoicing or in japanese i have tried to keep it as simple as possible because this is a course for the beginners and uh, instead of going into the
complications and exceptions which may confuse you. I have tried to explain it very in a very simple and easy language. Hope I have been able to explain it clearly. If not, please write in the comment section and I will try to improve it in future lessons. So friends, that's all for today. See you in the next lesson. Till then, goodbye. Thank you for watching the video. Arigato gozaimasu. And in case you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. And we continue with the next lesson in the next video. Mata imashou.